everyone. Happy Monday. Well, it's Monday as I'm shooting this. It'll be up on Tuesday, but um, I had quite the find at Walmart over the weekend. I was coming to the end of an aisle. I found a bunch of LA Color stuff and it was all $1.98. And I thought, this is about as cheap as it gets at Walmart. Like I know you can go to Dollar Tree and get something for a buck 25, but within Walmart, this is like as close as we're getting to the original Elf days. You know what I mean? They didn't have a lot, but they had like a couple of formulas of mascara, so I got one of those. They had liquid liner and pencil liner. I got this Mood lip gloss. We're gonna try that out. I know I've seen that at DG, but never tried it. And I got one of these palettes. They had several different tones of eyeshadow palettes, but I thought that whole thing for a buck 98. You know I'm a moth to a flame with this stuff, guys. So I am excited to see what we can make out of this and if we can just get a really good look going that we're gonna like. In terms of other lip things, they did have a lip plumper. Like I said, several shades of the eyeshadow. Um, there was a pencil eyeliner and then some nail polishes down below. So I thought for $1.98, let's see what this stuff can do. I've picked up LA Colors here and there from Dollar General or Dollar Tree. Sometimes there are some really good finds. It can just be kind of hit and miss. Um, but it was the first time, like I said, seeing this in Walmart and seeing a price that low. So as I join you today, I've got the rest of my face done. Um, I did already put on my Milani eyeshadow primer. I did my brows. All over my skin, I'm wearing my Wet n Wild Bare Focus Niacinamide Skin Tint, which I've really been enjoying the last several days. Um, light medium is the shade and the coverage is actually really pretty with this stuff. Definitely a medium coverage product. I use my Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer with that. Set it. It's a real Wet n Wild kind of day. I use the color Icon Bronzer in What Shady Beaches. For blush, I'm wearing the Rimmel Maxi Blush. This is in the shade Third Base. This one has just a little bit of a satin finish, kind of soft and peachy. Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighter in the shade Precious Petals. And yeah, that's kind of where we left off. So we'll do the eye look and we'll try that lip gloss and see how it goes. Now I'm sad that the Olympics are over, but as I went through just telling you everything about my look, I felt like I was on Bama Rush. Bama Rush, Rush Talk in general on TikTok is back in full force. So that's gonna take over for the Olympics, I guess. But I got the Sunset palette. There was also a nude and like another color offering as well. But I just thought maybe going into fall, this is something I could really get into. So we're gonna try it out. The mattes in this palette, by the way, are here here. Um, this one, fairly deep terracotta is matte, and then we also have a matte plum on the end. I think for starters, I'll use this shade, this little matte, kind of medium brown, and let's just see. We already have our Milani eyeshadow primer on, like I said. No complaints about what this is doing, actually. Going on as well as pretty much any other. I'm just blending it out and up. I'm gonna add a little bit more so it can be sort of buffed out toward the brow. I just think it's really cool to find something like this. Someone's really not wanting to spend that much on their makeup and this works out. It's gonna be a really great find. I'm gonna go to this matte here. It's the second one in the palette and it seems like it could be a really good shade. Oh, it's got a little more depth to it. It's not a straight up cream, but a good shade on the outer edge of something deeper just to help blend a bit. I mean, right now the crease is absolutely as smooth as you could expect. I'm gonna stick with mattes for right now and go into that terracotta. I really wanna see how pigmented this is. Okay, I'm really seeing it there in the outer corner. I kinda wonder if this is just a limited time thing or if LA Colors is gonna continue to have some sort of presence in Walmart. I'm loving the way that color looks, just all blended out into my crease, warming things up a lot. Before we go in with shimmer, I really want to see what this plum is all about because this is our darkest shade in the palette, and this is kind of a make it or break it moment. You know, if this does not go on showing itself with some full color, that's going to make a big difference to me. But I'm seeing it a little softer than I'd like. I really want it to be as dark as I'm seeing in the palette and it's showing up as kind of a, I don't know, really soft plum, but I am building it right now and getting a little more out of it. See that? I do love the color combo of those orangey types of shades and then something like this. It really does give you that sunset eye. Um, texture of the shadow seems good. I'm not getting a lot of fallout or flakiness so far, but I haven't tried the shimmers yet. So do you see how we're having to build a little bit to get more of a plumminess out of this color? And then I can take this original crease brush that I used 
and just move that around a bit. Make sure it's all blended up to the crease. Then for a lid shade, this color looks really pretty right here. I feel like that could be really nice right on the lid, but if anything in the palette's gonna be flaky, maybe it'll be that one too. It looks like it's got a lot going on. Let's see, ooh, oh, it's peachy. I'm going at it with kind of a swipe just cause that kind of helps shades like this lay down pretty well. I think that's super pretty coming in to this look, um, giving a little brightness. It's not like off the charts sparkle, but look like it does have some pigment going on. It's feeling just a little bit dusty. As I tap it on, I feel like maybe the shade is having a little trouble adhering right off the brush. So I'm gonna just press a little bit in with my finger. Does a little better job that way. And then I feel like we've got kind of a soft pearl. That's a really pretty texture right here at the end of the palette that I think will be nice going right around the inner corner for brightness. And then just for the sake of like getting to try another color in here, I'm gonna go to this third shade. It looks like it has maybe a more subtle shimmer than some of the rest and kind of a burgundy color. Ooh, quite pigmented. And I'm using that on my lower lash line. I wonder what a little bit of that might look like blended up into the crease as well. Again, I'm on that third shade from that end. That's really pretty coming into the look. I would say I'm all in all kind of pleased with the palette. It's not 100% flawless, you know, but I got all of this makeup for less than $10, just collectively. I need to blend that. My chief complaint with it would probably be like, I'd like to see that, I got really heavy handed with that on that side. I'd like to see the darkest shade really show up a bit darker in application, but all the other mattes did really well. The shimmer I chose was a little flaky, but as I swatched some of these others, they look pretty good, pretty smooth. I already have pumpkin spice creamer. Yes, I'm that person encouraging fall on, but I actually feel like at a glance, like this is a really solid eye look. This eye look could have come from a number of different high-end palettes potentially. It's definitely very workable. Now we're gonna work with this Graphics eyeliner, it says soft foam tip. Just got the shade black. This applicator seems pretty stiff. Um, there might be just a hint of flexibility at the tip, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna like this. I'm gonna start about at the middle. Try to stay pretty close to the lash line. Now I can't say much for staying power yet. It doesn't go on with quite as much ease as some other liquid liners that I've used. I was recently raving about that tank liquid liner pen from Milani and just how easy that was. This, the tip is really pretty stiff. So I do think that makes the application just a little bit more difficult. That being said, with the inkwell design, you are gonna have plenty of juice on it. Like you're not gonna be as worried about drying out the way a lot of pens can. So it's doing the job. It's giving me a thin line. Thin line right there next to the lash line. I got a little uneven over there. It's just a little bit harder. I would say gets the job done, but not as easily. If the tip was more flexible, that would make a big difference. Now the mascara I chose was the Lash Perfection Lengthening Formula. I think they also had a volumizing one there as well. Um, this is in the shade black. Okay, brush, ugh. I do not have high hopes when I see a brush like this. I really prefer to see a lot of spiky bristles because that's gonna get in there and prompt some more separation, but don't judge it until you've used it, let's see. And I don't feel like I even need to say this, but we all do have different kinds of lashes. Mine may be more difficult, don't take to just any mascara very well, but you might have like naturally curled, really thick lashes and you can get away with almost anything. It's kind of like people who maybe go into different foundations and you've got really good skin. You know, you could like a lot of foundations. Other people, maybe not so much. So it just depends on your starting point. Let's give it a go, friends. So I'm going through my lashes feeling like nothing's getting on there. Not only do we have a spiraled around brush, which doesn't always lend itself real well to separation, but it's coming off super cleaned off. So I'm relying on just any little bit of extra residue on the tip to just get something to show. Now I know this is coat one and we'll try another coat, but that's, that's barely anything. Trying to build while it's still got a little bit of tackiness to it there on my lashes. It says perfect lash. Okay, we are getting build. It's just not like a real nice thick forest of lashes, but it's at least 
with two coats able to look a little bit thicker. The thing I'm really noticing now is how that brush doesn't separate very much. It kind of goes through the lashes and if you got some stuck together they're just gonna stay buddies because it's not separating them out. And just thinking about the eyeshadow for example and what other options there are in Walmart. Um, you know, Wet n Wild you can get smallish palettes for a dollar or two more than what this one cost. You could get a five pan walking on eggshells and really like every bit of it. Or you could get Nude Awake and Ing or, you know, any other 10 pan palettes. Now you're going to pay around five dollars, five dollars and change perhaps with those, but the quality is really, really there with this. I'm really not mad at the eyeshadow palette. It seems like this could be a very good like kind of soft beginner option, but if you're wanting to see a lot more pigment and contrast out of deeper colors, I think that's where Wet n Wild comes in. That's where Hard Candy comes in. If you're trying to keep the price still as low as possible. Rimmel's got some little 10 pan palettes too that, you know, you're gonna pay a few more dollars than this, but you really see a jump in the quality, I think, or the richness. But don't get me wrong, a lot of this palette otherwise seems really good. And because it doesn't let me get too dark, it's probably giving a more on-trend, like, soft eye look. I'm also starting to see, as I put my brush back in, I'm getting product collecting there around the top, which we don't love to see. I mean, I feel like this is the kind of mascara I could fuss with for a long time just to try to get the result I want. Here's where we're at now with two plus coats on the lashes. I'm probably gonna need to quit while I'm ahead. We got mascara gooping around the, the exit here, but look what I could do. Load up the brush, wait a minute. Get a more goopy brush by loading it up with what came out around the opening and see if we can really build now. Seems like a pretty strange way to do it, but hey, we're getting somewhere now. They're looking a little thicker, looking a little longer. LA Colors, I've cracked your code. Oh man, I just got a lot more on there. I'm gonna set on my under eye, by the way, because I use powder down there. I'm gonna try Rimmel Stay Matte for this step and see if it works the same way for me that Kosas Cloud Set does. Rimmel Stay Matte and Creamy Natural. And I can tell you right now I need more blush, even before the lip. I need more blush! We're gonna go with the same shade I originally put on, just add a little more here. This peach is playing nicely with the tones on the eye, I think. Final thing, we got the Mood Lip Gloss. Clear, tints, pink. Lip gloss is specially formulated to change from clear to your own shade of pink. Leaves lips soft and ultra shiny. LA Colors Mood Instinctive Lip Gloss. I've seen this at Dollar General before or something similar to this from LA Colors, but have never tried it. Oh, Bisky. She brought me her little catnip sloth. Go get it. So it's a little squeezy tube like this. I usually don't apply those straight to my lips. Well, that's a lot. As you can see, it's going on my 100% bare lips. Whoa, I'm already seeing color. Smells nice, sweet, maybe a little bit fruity, but I can't put my finger on what. Wow, that's really going there, in a hurry. Feels good, not too greasy actually. I put on quite a bit of gloss, I felt like. I think a lot of people would enjoy that, frankly. A soft pink lip like that, really nice and shiny. Could be nice, you know, even pairing in a different lip liner or whatever. Now, I've got decent length over here, but the curl dropped quite a bit. See, I'm kind of boosting it up and you can sort of see what's going on there. Final thoughts on this stuff. It's not bad, okay? It's $1.98, which is a steal of a deal. But is it really even worth your time and energy? Like, is it making life harder? I would say a couple of these are. The eyeliner and the mascara. As I applied the liner, I was like, this is not really easy. This could be easier and probably for just a dollar or two more from different brands, you know? However, it's not impossible. Keep in mind, I got all of this for 10 bucks, okay? Think of all the things you see in the drugstore cause cosmetics wise that are $10 or more. Really, we did get an acceptable look, but if we're getting picky and really thinking about how the application went, my mind immediately goes to Milani, although I know that probably is approaching $10 with that tank eyeliner. So not impossible, not the worst thing. The mascara really didn't love this. It says perfect lash lengthening mascara. It was a chore. You had to come up with tricks to make it work. Maybe you're the type who just has lashes that really respond well to anything, then maybe that would work fine for you. For me, 
I really had to work at it and my result is still just okay. These are not as separated out as I'd like them to be. And I think of some of my more affordable options from the drugstore. I mean, this Wet n Wild So Defined, phenomenal new mascara. I've also been loving Rimmel Thrill Seeker. There's another low cost option. Rimmel Kind and Free is a good one. There are quite a few good options now at the lower end of the drugstore. The eyeshadow, this is 12 shades for $1.98, and most of it was really good. My chief complaint would be I'd like to see more depth out of the darkest shade and maybe a little less flake out of the shimmer I used, but was my eyeshadow able to look totally blended and still achieve that kind of warm, toasty look? Yeah. If you wanna see more depth and darkness, I would say the next cheapest and best thing you could go to would probably be Wet n Wild in the drugstore. This, I really like. I think that shade of pink is really pretty on my lips. The texture is nice. It's very shiny. It would layer up well in your different lip combos that you're doing. I really don't have any complaints about this other than I maybe would like a doe foot applicator rather than needing to apply with my finger, but that's okay. Again, buck 98. So yeah, friends, that's my little review on these products from LA Colors. To sum it up in a nutshell, it's stuff that's able to get the job done in some ways, not as easily as you may hope. But what I really like to see is a very low cost drugstore option available to people. It can cost a lot to get out of Walmart with your groceries. So if you can be spending $1.98 for your lip gloss, that's a good option to have. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Have you seen or tried any of this stuff? What has your experience been like? Um, would you like to see me do some more things with that little sunset palette? I'd be happy to. Um, I don't know if I want to tussle with that mascara a whole lot more, but I'm not really that upset with the eyeshadow palette. So thank you again, guys, for your time, and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.